Good evening. A vigil has been held tonight in memory of a 17-year-old boy killed in Bournemouth at the weekend. Jack Gudge was found unconscious on Wimborne Road in Winton in the early hours of Saturday morning. Tonight, balloons were released in his memory, as Martin Douse now reports. A constant stream of both friends and strangers were pausing at this spot today to remember Jack Gudge, a young man clearly well-known and well-liked. The 17-year-old was found unconscious here on Friday night after the emergency services were called to reports of a fight outside this Tesco Express. He couldn't be resuscitated. Close friend Gabby, just one of those today who wanted to see the spot where she lost a friend and leave a tribute. Yeah, we've known each other for about four or five years. He'd always walk, like the type of boy that would walk me home, like from a party, or he'd bring me hours early in the morning. Like, he's just the most down to earth boy I've ever, ever met, like ever. And he's like not got a bad bone in his body at all. When I found out, I just, it just felt, it feels so surreal. I, I used to hear from him every day and now I'm not going to hear from him. It's just going to be heartbreaking. It was almost the exact spot where another tragedy happened 15 years ago. 42-year-old Clive Wilcox died after being punched once outside the shop, then a one-stop, in an altercation with a group of youths. His killer later pleading guilty to manslaughter. That another family is suffering loss and heartbreak is deeply felt by the local community, police keeping a reassuring presence on the streets. Three men in their 20s and a 15-year-old boy have been arrested on suspicion of murder and released on bail while investigations continue. Officers are appealing for witnesses but are increasingly concerned about the large amount of postings and chatter on social media surrounding the incident and what that could lead to. I would encourage everyone that either posts on social media or that can influence those that are doing so not to post anything that is inflammatory, that is threatening or that could prejudice the investigation. So to try and calm the situation, Jack's mother, Jolene, has issued a personal message. She says, words can't describe how thankful I am for all the support, kind messages, flowers and cards for my wonderful, beautiful, funny son. But she adds, his dad and I request that no one takes any action on their own behalf, as this will affect the justice that Jack rightly deserves. This was Jack a few weeks ago at his school prom with girlfriend Nicole Keeley, his life ahead of him. This evening, friends and neighbours will attend a memorial vigil for him close to his home to remember that life now sadly lost. Martin Dow, ITV News, Bournemouth. In other news tonight, a troubled ambulance service in the south has been warned to make significant improvements to address serious failings. The Care Quality Commission says the South East Coast Ambulance Service, which covers Sussex and Surrey, needs to increase the number of staff deployed to patient care. Chief Executive has apologised. Rail passengers who've suffered months of chaos on southern trains are being warned to expect more disruption over the August bank holiday. It's due to major works at London Bridge Station, part of the ongoing refurbishment programme. Our transport correspondent Mike Pearce has more details. In just six weeks' time, tens of thousands of passengers will start to use a massive new concourse, escalators and three new platforms at London Bridge. It is by far one of the biggest ever upgrades for southern Thameslink and southeastern passengers. At the end of August, it all starts to go live. But there's a warning of major disruption over the holiday and for more than a year after it. Cannon Street trains will not stop at London Bridge. Well, we've been working on the project now on site for three and a half years. And we're in, in August, we're about to open the new concourse downstairs. Two thirds of the whole concourse at the end. Um, about six times the size of the existing concourse. Well, here at London Bridge, they're spending around £1 billion on the station alone. And the most significant part of work so far is due to open at August Bank Holiday. But looking around, there's still masses of work to do. Network Rail is painfully aware the work must not run late. We've been walking around today. There's still a hell of a lot of work to do, six weeks to go. How confident are you? Because this can't overrun. It can't overrun and therefore I'm very confident all our focus is on making sure that it is ready. Um, I think it's a bit like when you buy a home, you, you think it's never going to be ready and then suddenly it is and, and that will be the case here. When the work is complete in 2018, it will allow up to 24 trains an hour from the region through London. It will also help the disruption faced by Southern and Thameslink passengers. Southern passengers will benefit because we'll have this new concourse that they can use, the same as they can use their existing one, but much, much larger, much better facilities, much better facilities uh, and much more um, open, so a much better feel to their uh, environment. 
Meanwhile, the southern disruption continues, with around half of all trains still late, despite 341 cancellations. The chaos was made worse by overrunning engineering works at Horsham today. Back at London Bridge, though, work goes on, and we're promised it will end on time. Mike Pierce, ITV News, London Bridge. And Tory MPs from across the region spent the weekend nervously waiting for the phone to ring as Theresa May continued to appoint ministers to her new government. It was good news for some, but not everyone in our region kept their jobs, as our political correspondent Phil Hornby explains. Is nuclear deterrent. I call the Prime Minister. Being Prime Minister is all about coping with the unpredictable. Theresa May came to the Commons today for the first time in her new role after a statement on the terrible events in Nice. Alongside her on the front bench, ministerial colleagues old and new. She'd already chosen her cabinet, Surrey South West MP Jeremy Hunt staying as Health Secretary. And now we have new ministerial appointments. Simon Kirby from Brighton Kent Town gets an important job as Economic Secretary to the Treasury. Portsmouth North MP Penny Mordant and Damien Hines from East Hampshire have become ministers at the Department for Work and Pensions, as has Caroline Noakes, the MP for Romsey and Southampton North. Gosport MP Caroline Dynage has moved from the Justice Department to Education, but stays as Minister for Women and Equalities. Robert Sims from Poole and Steve Brine from Winchester become whips. Their role will be to make sure legislation gets through despite the government's very small majority. And the Meon Valley MP George Hollingbury becomes Mrs May's parliamentary private secretary. In other words, her eyes and ears among the Tory backbenches. But arguably for our region, the most important minister will be this man, Chris Grayling, the new transport secretary who has to sort out the problems on Southern Rail and decide about South East Airport expansion. It's thought he favours Heathrow. Meanwhile, look what was back at Westminster today. That bus, which has now been hired by Greenpeace. They very publicly removed the controversial slogan on the side and replaced it with one of their own. Those arguments go on as Westminster looks forward to a well-earned summer holiday starting on Wednesday after some of the most frenzied, astonishing weeks it's ever seen. Phil Hornby, ITV News, Westminster. Certainly has been eventful and there's more details on the new government on our website. Just go to itv.com forward slash meridium. A couple have been forced to jump from their yacht when it caught fire near Pool Harbour. Lifeboat crews were called when smoke started billowing from the engine. The couple managed to leap onto a passing motorboat. Luckily, no one was injured. A hundred billion pounds worth of aviation orders have been placed at the Farnborough International Air Show over the past week. 850 aircraft and 1,400 engines were purchased. Thousands of people attended the main events and displays over the weekend. Oh, it's gone absolutely fantastic. Uh, we've had some wonderful, amazing amount of orders in, over $100 billion of orders in. Uh, clients have had a fantastic week and we're actually up on rebookings for 2018. As the Ben Ainsley's bid to bring home the America's Cup comes to the South Coast this weekend, the latest World Series event takes place in Portsmouth and the four times Olympic gold medalist is in determined mood. To bring the America's Cup home to Britain, I think it would be righting a real wrong in our maritime and our sporting history. Uh, for the team based here in Portsmouth, it's really a big part of what we're about is to bring the Cup back to British waters and really have, through that, to have a positive impact on not only our sporting environment, but uh, the local community. And finally tonight, on the hottest day of the year so far, people in Ride found a novel way to cool down, sliding down the main street. The best of all Ride slide saw 600 people slide down Union Street with temperatures in the high 20s. They were keeping cool and raising money for local charities and having an awful lot of fun. Now, is the weather going to be even hotter tomorrow? With all the details tonight, it's Simon Parkin. From cold fronts to camping, driving through Europe, Eurotunnel the Shuttle sponsors ITV Meridian Weather.
Good evening and brace yourself for another night of tossing and turning. It's a bit hot and sticky with temperatures in some places, well, around 20 degrees, which, to be honest, last week we'd have been happy with for a daytime temperature. But apart from the fact that it's muggy and humid, there could also be a bit of patchy mist developing through the night as well. But that'll burn away fairly quickly tomorrow and it is going to be another glorious day. Plenty of sunshine, temperatures even warmer than today. We could see highs of around 34 degrees. That puts us nicely in the 90s in Fahrenheit. But of course, that does mean very high UV levels and you will burn quickly if you're outside in the sun. Eurotunnel The Shuttle sponsors ITV Meridian Weather. That's hot and that is all from us for tonight. We are back during Good Morning Britain from six o'clock tomorrow morning, but for me and from all of us here on the team, good night.